suspected Islamists assassinate Kashmiri Hindu as killings escalate. On August 16th, militants fired at two civilians, both members of the minority Kashmiri Hindu community, known as Pandits, in uh, Chotipura village of the uh, Shopian district in the contentious Jammu and Kashmir region. The two victims, Pintu Kumar and Sunil Kumar, were brothers. They were trimming overgrown willow trees with assistance from three from three local uh, when th from three locals when two masked assailants reportedly told the hired hands to leave the, the field and then shot the brothers. Pintu was severely injured and survived. However, Sunil died from his injuries. As of this writing, no arrests have been made. The Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir stated via Twitter, quote, pained beyond words uh, on the despicable terror attack on civilians in Shopian. Terrorists responsible for this barbaric act will not be spared. This is the latest incident in a series of targeted killings that have rocked the Kashmir region over the past several months, reigniting painful memories of the ethnic cleansing of Hindus from the area by radical Islamists in the 1990s. After a spate of targeted shootings of Hindus in May and June that took the lives of a bank manager, a brick worker, and a school teacher, among others, many protests were staged. These organized street protests demanded that the government relocate Hindu minorities to safer areas. India claims that the Pakistani government incites these acts of terrorism. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. So I wanted to really talk about this because I have been following over the past few months some of the reportings of the murders of Hindus that have been happening in Kashmir. And I actually do find it very important to talk about the persecutions of Hindus on this channel. But I didn't want to cover it at the time because, frankly, I didn't know that much about the whole Kashmir conflict. And I, I wanted to wait until I understood more about it, the broader story of it, before going into this. So, and then very recently, this most recent targeted killing happened. So I wanted to take this as an opportunity to talk about this like resurgence of violence that's been happening in Kashmir. Cause like I said, it's really important to cover this. Um, I, well, before I go further, Armin, what are your thoughts? Um, some people in the last chat are saying, I'll, I'll expose it and saying Al Jazeera is not covering this. And I, I, I think they must, but so I was just looking for that. Um, yeah, but it does seem like there's not, like, I haven't seen this on my feed. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's getting that much of a coverage. Why do you think that? Because I think like if it's, I, I mean, I do see that, um, when the other way around is getting coverage. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why this is not getting covered. Do you feel that that's the other side is getting more coverage? Like, and this gets ignored by the media? It depends on which media. Al Jazeera, I don't think they cover this. Al Jazeera focuses a lot on the um, the abuses of India's counterinsurgency effort, um, their crackdown on journalists, um, their uh, security measures that go too far, abuses by the Indian government, et cetera, et cetera. And all those so things are- So it's very one-sided. Yes, all those things are really important to talk about. And those are problems I have with like this general conflict, right? Like I share those concerns, but I haven't seen Al Jazeera, for example, covering the resurgence and targeted killings recently. Like the, most of the information I got about this was from um, like Associated Press, I think, and other sources. And, well, and then also where our writers pulled their sources from. Um, can can some people check because I'm trying to find any uh, Al Jazeera coverage of this. I can't seem to find it right now. But if you guys let me know in the live chat if this is true. But go on, yeah. Okay, so I I think that this does deserve serious coverage because here's the problem: like a lot of people want to act like <laughs> the Kashmir problem doesn't have like an actual radical Islamist angle to it. It does, and I think that denialism is a severe disservice to everyone involved, everyone, Kashmiris, whether you're Pandits or Muslims, to the entire nation of India, frankly. Um, I think um, it's, Oxymoron is saying, I think no international 
platform covered this until recently, including BBC and NY Times, I, though after the movie, meaning the Kashmir files, that's changing. I don't think that's true. I saw coverage of this before then. Um, Sheikh B is saying this will not be covered by India media as well because Modi will be targeted and his image of savior of Kashmiri, Kashmiri pundits will be damaged. Ooh, that actually brings up a good point. So for those who are not aware, like this giant insurgency movement in Kashmir that kicked off in like 89 and then really was under full force in the 1990s did cause, and I can't believe people don't identify it as such, I identify as a legitimate ethnic cleansing of Hindus from the region. And the fact that people try to whitewash it as otherwise actually enrages me. Um, and so that happened. And then the government had this scheme around 2010. Um, I might be wrong on the date, but I believe it was around 2010 where they were going to take a lot of the pundits that fled from Kashmir in the 90s and since then and relocate them back to Kashmir with... Um, use programs for jobs, housing, etc. So then with this spate of targeted t killings that happened recently, a lot of these relocated... Oh, I think I just froze. No, you're good. Oh, wait, you're frozen. Okay, Susie. Well, Susie is looking... Are you back, Susie? Oh, no. No, you're here. Wait. You're saying, oh, no, I'm here. I'm back. Yes, you're I'm back. back. Okay, okay. Just, it, it froze for me for a second. So what was I saying? Okay, so they were relocated back. And now with this 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 run of targeted killings that's happened recently, the people who are relocated are protesting the government, basically saying, you only relocated us for your own image. So you could make it look like things were under control. You could make it look like you had a handle on the situation and you don't. And things are still dangerous for us and we need to leave. Um, and so that's been quite significant because the the level of protests that we're seeing were like somewhat unprecedented. Um, and uh, I think it's 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 I don't know I don't it's if personally if I was if I was a Hindu there I'd be really scared. Higgs Boson is saying they called the relocation a demographic change. Okay, I'm not. I think that's kind of unfair. Because the whole reason why they left was ethnic cleansing. That is demographic change. What? <laughs> like... Yep. Yeah, but 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 okay. So I agree that that was demographic uh, engineering. Okay. But you don't. When the demographic engineering happened, you can't. And even if it was really wrong, you you do not fix that with another demographic engineering. You just like you have to deal with the new situation underground you know what i mean it's Wait, kind so of like Israel... forced out of their homes and if the government says we're going to help you get back into your home suddenly that's not okay because if that's it... demographic engineering what if it's the same people it's okay but one generation okay. past it's is now it's now your home i think what i mean i don't know maybe two generations like this is but like you think okay, israel so... you think jewish people have a right to return to israel that is way further wait. than that wait jewish you mean palestinian no, the, uh, the, Jew the Jewish people have a right to return to Israel. Jewish people? Yeah, like a Jewish person, if you can prove your Jewish heritage, you can attain Israeli citizenship. Oh, okay. I said that made sense for the situation of as Jewish people being under a threat, you know, after mm -hmm. World War I and World War II. That situation, this was a good solution for that at the time. Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that this is a good solution for everything. At the time when Jewish people were safe nowhere around the world, okay, having a place where they could be safe made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Like it, it seemed like it, it was seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, I don't think like I'm not in favor of you just being able to. By the way, I don't think it was because they were going back home. I didn't give a crap about the fact that this was thousands of years ago. Jewish people lived there. Like that doesn't give ah, you a right. To they could have been availing could of have citizenship been, anywhere. It could have been world. anywhere okay. else. So like it could have been like it would actually. It would prefer. It would be better if it was somewhere. It probably else. would have been better. <laughs> yeah, it would, yeah. Now with hindsight, it would have been better, much better if it was somewhere else. I mean, yeah, we don't know. Um, but yeah, no. But I'm just saying, like, if you, if you, if you are, if this is your home, 
and your grandparent took it by unjustifiably, it's not, it's the sin of the father. It's now your home. Nobody should kick you out. This is now your home. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. I think you, I think you should have a right to relocate within the same area. So what happened in World War II in America is that the Japanese were forcibly interned, basically in concentration camps around the nation, right? And when the Japanese were forcibly pulled out, a lot of other people just moved into their houses. And then when World War II was over and the Japanese wanted to go back to their neighborhoods, there were people that had taken all of their property. And so yeah. what they did was basically they, they just moved to a neighborhood like immediately next to where they used to be okay, in, some, same, in San Francisco. Okay, okay. So was it the same people or are we talking about one or two generation past? It was the same people. Uh, basically the same people. Okay, then yeah, you have to take your home back. Okay, if it's your if it's the same goddamn people, somebody took your home, you have to take it back. Okay, I'm just saying at a, a few generations down, then you need to figure out another solution. You can't kick ch people out of their but they don't. But either because... way, even a few generations down wouldn't have legal claim over that property. I mean, they did not attain it legally. They do not have the legal rights to that property. Okay, the law is. Whose law are we talking about here? Okay, because I, I, if they go, the law is something that the government comes up with, so they could technically be legally owning that property. So we're talking about whether it's morally justifiable, not legally justifiable, because legally you could justify anything. Legally, mm -hmm. like who you know, you could justify I don't know genocides with laws. Like you just you just write a law so that genocide is legal, right? So you could, I'm, I'm, we're talking about what laws to make. I'm just saying, like, if you have multiple generations of people living in a place, if their grandparents did something wrong to take that place, I don't think you could go and make these people homeless. Oh, so what do you think about the forced evictions of Palestinians in East Jerusalem that basically kicked off the war we saw last year? Yeah, I mean, I, could, I think that's their home. I think that's the wrong that's, I think that's wrong. I think there needs to be a better solution. I think if okay. there's, yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is, you know, I think like mm, the Palestinians who have been out of their homes for m multiple generations, for example, right? They need to be compensated somehow, okay? I just think the compensation doesn't necessarily have to be, here's your land back. You know what I mean? Here's your land of your grandparents back. Even if they're I'm... legally entitled to that land? Well, they're not legally entitled to that land because the law is the laws of Israel. Which law are you talking about? No, so I, I, I meant just in theory. I'm talking in abstract now. So morally then, not legally, because the laws are made up. You could change the laws to, you could, you, the law could be bad, the law could be good. You could make up the law so that it's more moral, right? The law could be a bad law and you could change it so that it has a better solution, right? So I'm talking it... morally, not legally. If there is a legal precedent that these people who two generations ago were forced out of their homes and they mm -hmm. still have, based on the laws that are on the books, a legal right to that property. Right. What should be done? I mean, if the law, if, if the law already has a remedy, then go with it. Okay. We're talking about a situation where the law is being written by the people uh, with biases. You know what I mean? Like the law, okay, We're let's say you don't have a law and the law is in your hand to write it. I'm talking about what would be the best solution, okay? If you have a legal precedent, that makes things a lot more complicated. But I'm saying if you had the choice to make the laws, what laws should you write so that everybody comes better off, okay? You, your mm. grandparents lost this home and that you are suffering from it because there's multi-generational effect. I'm not saying that you should lose everything, okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you should be compensated. I'm just suggesting that the compensation doesn't necessarily have to come in the format of here's your land, here's the, the, the lands of your ancestors back, okay? Because there are now people living there that would be homeless, and they live. this is their home now, and they didn't commit any of these crimes. It was their... Like this, it wasn't. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do this to you. Other people did. Okay, so if you need to be compensated, can we talk money, for example, here? 
and coming from the government, not for the, not from those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're getting at. God, it's so complicated. Oh no. In general, what do you think about the status of Kashmir? I think they need to referendum ASAP. <laughs> I think they needed a referendum yesterday, like many years ago, right? I mean, it was, but I might be wrong about this. I think like, um, they, yeah, I, I mean, don't people keep talking about what, what is best for them. I mean, the easiest solution is just to ask them. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think, so, that, I mean, so there's part of me that is aligned with that just as I, you know, have a value for democracy and the democratic voice of people on the other hand. And I'm totally willing to change my mind about this because this is an issue I've just started to learn about in more depth and trying to pursue really unbiased sources and doing my research about this. But I'm going to be honest, like I don't really have, I don't have a sympathy for like the free Kashmir movement. I don't, that's not something I support. Why in the world would I want to support another Islamic Republic in the world? This started, and, and granted, here's the difference. I am aware that this started as a radical Islamist movement. And that is frankly something I can never support. Now, as the Indian government and Indian army has repeatedly failed to ameliorate the situation in any sort of conductive way, I understand that there are aspects of this movement that have completely changed and they're now also in reaction to the abuses by the state itself. So that's kind of a separate conversation and still something I'm unpacking. And, but in general, yeah, I'm, I think Kashmir should be part of India. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, why would I it... want another Islamic state? Like, what? <laughs> but I understand hmm. that there's more to it than that. But especially watching what was coming out of Kashmir at the time, it's insane. And the fact that people deny how radical and dangerous in the jihad of it is crazy to me. But then on the other hand, as someone who deeply values human rights, I, I can recognize all the ways in which regular Kashmiris are abused and their rights are stripped away from them and their ability to report and express themselves feel freely is inhibited in a way that I can't stand by. So I don't know. I hope that makes my position somewhat clear. Like I think, yeah, I mean, my position isn't entirely clear, but <laughs> I don't know. Armin, what do you think about that? Okay, so I mean it's complicated, and I think. But first of all, Vito visits in the live chat. So hey guys, yeah, Vito visits yeah, here. Yeah, look at that guy. Vito's here. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. Also, Satya is losing his mind over what you're saying. <laughs> He's like, "Damn, Susie is with us. <laughs> all hail, Lady Susie." <laughs> that is like, I'm. I think I'm dreaming. Okay, what, uh, Susie? You making <laughs> a hardcore uh, liberal? <laughs> <laughs> saying <laughs> no to free Kashmir. <laughs> no to free Kashmir. Okay, so I mean, I just historically, I there hasn't been a good. We haven't had a good recommend a, a good precedent for good record of what uh, we've seen. What happens when you decide what's best for people yourself? You know, when you do secular, you know anti-islamism for the top down so you're saying like if we let the, uh, if we let the kashmiris choose they might go with an islamic republic and you're saying that you know better for the kashmiri people that that's going to be um bad for them more than the, you know so maybe like keeping them in india is better for them than what they would choose themselves so you're making you're making you're going over you're making an anti-secular argument here right you are deciding no so, no 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 I'm not because I, I started <laughs> cosmic even to saying Susie is officially an Indian. Now I started <laughs> my statement with saying, I deeply value the democratic process and having a population, having that be available to them. Right. So I, I, there is a huge part of me that is values that more. My personal feelings are that 
I'm afraid that things would move towards choosing an Islamic Republic. <laughs> so see what I mean? Okay. Like, no, no. So it's, it's yeah, not, so I'm not going have, against my value of democracy. I am just like, God damn, I hope you don't choose that. <laughs> I mean, they might. Okay. You're say, so I'm saying give the people the choice. Okay. But you're saying F that they might choose wrong. Keep them in India. That's basically what's happening here. I'm not saying F that. Okay. I'm not saying F so that. So why not I'm let saying, them choose? Hope, like you should have that. I, I didn't probably say that they not going to choose. They, I'm just okay, scared they, about what they might choose. That's all. They, 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 they might choose Islamic Republic. What are you going to do now? Should we give them a referendum? I know. I don't. I mean, I don't like that. That just because I'm saying I don't like that does I'm not taking away their no. the, the fact that they should be able to choose. No, you themselves. might be okay, but you might That's be justified. Not a, not conflicting. No, no, like you think I'm attacking you with you. This is complicated. Okay, you might be justified to. You're like, I mean, I disagree with you, mm. but your position is not as. You know, you know, I don't think we have to be dogmatic about our support for democracy. Like, I support democracy, okay? But we have to keep reevaluating whether we're supporting it dogmatically or not, right? So if you're, like, questioning that, it's okay to question that. You're like, okay, these people might not know what they're getting themselves into. Maybe it would be better, maybe from a utilitarian perspective, as good as democracy is, maybe in this case it would be better if they don't get the referendum. I'm not saying that, I'm not making that argument, but it's worth discussing these things. Oh, Susie's frozen. All right, let me respond to some of these people um, because... No, I can hear you. Wait, there were two oh. comments I wanted to highlight. Um, highlight. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay, awesome. Um, this is an important comment from Mir Jalal. He's saying, uh, oh, I, I agree with Susie as a Kashmiri. Overall, we are better off with India given india becomes secular in practice so saying okay if we if india becomes lives up to its secular standard we're better off with india okay here's the thing though you are a kashmiri but you are one kashmiri okay so <laughs> we can't do, like we have to the vo the only way to hear <laughs> the voice of all kashmiris is to get a referendum that's the only way the only way is to get have a referendum I don't understand. I don't understand why we shouldn't have a referendum. Like, why? Yeah, no. are, what's the arguments against referendum? Of course, but I wanted to show that because I think it's... you're getting cut again. Let me actually. Someone whose life is it... affected by this, we should actually like. Yeah. No, no, it's good that you highlighted that. But let me. You're getting cut, uh, Susie. So let me just uh, read a few other comments by Oxymoron. Yeah, and highlight this one. Tell me when you're back. Okay, Aksimora is saying, if they deserve a referendum, so does American states that wished for slavery, so does Ireland. Okay, Aksimoran, you are, I am questioning your critical thinking skills, okay? Just because some things should be up for a referendum, that doesn't mean that everything should be up for a referendum. Okay, slavery is a basic human rights. That's not up for that's not up for uh, democratic um, voting or anything like that. Okay, that's a that's a principle. This is why we support republics, not pure demo, not um, absolute democracies. Okay, there are some limitations to the rule of the majority. We don't want uh, the tyranny of the majority. Okay, there are certain in liberal democracies. There are certain things that are not up for vote, including slavery. Okay, but I don't know what you mean by Ireland. If you mean um, re a referendum and then seceding, then yeah, that should be up for a referendum. Why not? Um, ref the referendum was promised to a different generation. Okay. And I, I, even if it wasn't promised at all, it makes sense for you to have a referendum in Kashmir, even if it was never promised at all. Okay, Susie is going to be back soon. Satya is saying, free Texas would have been democratic but horrible um horrible yeah i mean guys we have precedent for this like we have canada did a referendum on quebec leaving um uk did this with scotland so i don't know what you guys are you're acting like this is like such a bizarre like oh what about them what about like what about like uh, would it you know if if we did a referendum in Kashmir, what about these other countries? Like, yeah, we support it in other places as well. If there is enough demand for it. 
uh james is saying you guys deserve more views this is the most interesting conversation i've observed in a while yeah well i hope we get susie back because it's it's interesting because we have susie aj is saying there's no law about a law and what is this captain another saying this is like a strategy by oh no that's a different comment from before all right where's susie we need susie back here let me see if uh oh there we go susie's back her device is not connected she's gonna connect this one let me just see what you guys say oh so i was saying look look what happened to us in the uk when we had a referendum oh my god okay so now you're supporting not having reference like yeah true okay people make the wrong decisions sometimes like the like brexit that's very true but what are you gonna do what do you um I'm not in favor of having referendum referendums for everything all the time, okay? But if there is, I mean, okay, so there, okay, I'm actually against a referendum on Brexit, okay? Because there wasn't, it wasn't needed, okay? There wasn't, you weren't stopping war by, so I think you weren't stopping this major cost of society like there was not this major demand there wasn't this tragedy that is happening that you could you were stopping i, I think like a referendum on kashmir will just end up a lot of uh and stopping a lot of bloodshed so it's much it's much more needed there than when than brexit i don't know i have to think about it i mean i think that doing the cost benefit analysis on this is very complicated but i do think like overall if you just give people the the right to self-determination on average that's a better thing but it has to be through negotiations and both sides agreeing it can't be just like I'm, I'm not i'm not in favor of anybody uh seceding by force uh, international laws needs to be respected and borders need to be um accepted unless there's a mutual agreement on both sides um yeah that's why i'm basically against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, Susie, are you, do we have you back? Susie? Susie? Okay. Susie? Where's my Susie? Okay, Susie's image quality is low. Susie? Let me actually message her, please. Hello? Such so as saying, damn, Armin, you, in, you united the whole Indian left and right in the live chat. How did I do that? Against me? Oh, Susie is messaging me. I'm going to join on my phone. Okay, Susie's going to come back on her phone. Can you please send me the. Oh, shit. She's been asking for the link. Oh, there we go. Okay, Susie's going to come on her phone. I'm back a little bit right now. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I sent you the link. Can you link. hear me right now? Come back. Yeah, I can hear you, but with a delay. So try coming on your phone. Whatever Stormy is saying, there's already a pathway to referendum by the United Nations, but to get to that, the Pakistani army needs to withdraw first from their side of Kashmir. Well, that seems inconvenient. Selva is saying, if Kashmir has referendum, I know a couple of states which will follow suit. Tamil, uh, Nadu being the top of that list. Me siding with Satya and Oxymoron is literally making me puke. <laughs> Okay, wow, everybody is uniting in the live chat against me. Wow, you're coming up crisp and clean and really seems like pretty good. Do you have we do we have audio? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I think okay, I managed cool. to unite to unite the live chat against me. Everybody's no, on you, your side. They united united them towards a common cause. People agree with you. Oh, they do? No, they're disagreeing with me. Yeah. Anyways, either way, they're united, so that's good. <laughs> uh, look at this. Look at the love and hate. Look at this. 
Shake Beef is saying, me siding with Satya and Oxymoron is literally making me puke. And this is this is a comment on Twitch. We have like a Twitch YouTube comment uh, crossing. And Satya is saying, the feeling is mutual, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Hindutva, anti-Hindutva agreeing with. <laughs> no, you know what I think is funny is that um, I, I, because of this new story, basically I started looking at pictures of Kashmir and Kashmir yeah. is beautiful. Like I want yeah. to go visit Kashmir so badly now. I'm like, is it is it safe for me? Because this place is stunning. I'm obsessed. It looks like where I grew up. Like I love it. <laughs> the I don't like oh it when God. people say this place is beautiful. Because I, I literally can't find a place. Joy? That... What? No, because everywhere has like be like, have you been to this place? It's beautiful. I'm like. Yeah, everywhere is beautiful. Like, okay, no, no. that's not true. Have you been to the middle of America? It's not beautiful. There's nothing to see. It's I'm pretty sure no. it has some beautiful scenes. I'm pretty sure some beautiful scenes. <laughs> I'm sure. I hate it when people say that a place is beautiful. What? I no. <laughs> I, I just think it's no. I I mean, I'm not saying I'm not anti beauty. But I'm just saying every country, every region has is beautiful. I'm actually mean. I'm being positive. I'm saying everywhere is beautiful. Okay. I just, it's kind of like, well, because you're being anti beauty now. You're, you just live there and you hate where you live. So you just can't see the beauty of those places. I think I've never lived in middle America. What are you talking about? Okay. Let me see middle America. I'm a a West Coast baby. What? (laughs) Okay. Any. Anyways, wait, we should move to the next news because I'm on my phone now and I'm going to be running out of battery. Okay, Middle America scenery, Google Google Images is beautiful. I just check. Wrong. By definition, <laughs> by definition, everywhere cannot be beautiful. I you said think everywhere has in beautiful. Liberia is beautiful? Like, I said everywhere has beautiful scenery. I didn't say every place is beautiful. The, every location, every big big enough location has beautiful scenery. Just look just look for the location, go to Google Images, type the name of the place, and then write scenery, and look at Google Images. Beautiful places will show up. Armin is just trying to take my appreciation <laughs> for Kashmir away from me, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> we do is saying, Armin, stop beauty shaming Kashmir. I, exactly. I just think... It's kind of like I I met Iranian people. They're such amazing people. They're such loving people. Like, yeah. No, that's a generalization like, of people that's unwarranted. Saying that you find a landscape beautiful in that specific region is subjective and, and opinion. True. It's not yeah. a generalization. I'm sure, yeah, I, every every country has good people, and every place, every country has good sinners. Anyways, let's move to the next news. <laughs> what a the strangest thing to fight with me over. <laughs> You picked the fight. I was just making a comment. Oh, I picked the fight. Okay. I can't. can't. All right. right. Kashmir is beautiful. Okay. So is everywhere else. Can we clap for the next? Tell me if it's safe enough for me to visit. I want to (laughs) go. No, it's not. What are you talking about? For you? No. A girl can dream. There are enough other beautiful places. All right. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. Thank you.